blades. All the Yiddaka devils are a special lot, a cut above the rest. But what really sets the devils apart from all other teams is their sumptuous dressing room. Now not everybody can get a glimpse inside the Utica Pleasure Den. Only a select group of people are ever invited. And Rinkside received a personal invitation to tour what is surely the most magnificent dressing quarters in all of professional hockey. What you are about to see will make your mouth water. The inner sanctum awaits you once you cross the threshold. Feast your eyes on this. Why, there's an entire room set aside just for the players' street clothes. And the players enjoy exquisite stained mahogany benches made from Californian redwood and hand-carved by some of the finest European craftsmen the world's ever known. Our cameras have come across a labyrinth of corridors. But where does it all lead? A wall-to-wall -wall jacuzzi. Why, this dressing room is fit for a king. And there's even room for Janet. After a hard day's work, Utica players like nothing better to do than relax in their very own hot tub. Ah, that's the life. But if warm isn't your cup of tea, then why not try the cold whirlpool? Now I'm told this is very invigorating, but I'd prefer to have my champagne on ice. <laughs> now sometimes even a hot jacuzzi can't get rid of all those nasty muscle cramps. But the Utica players don't have to worry. There's always a massage. Wouldn't you like to lay down on one of these soft beds? Oh, if this isn't heaven, I don't know what is. And what's this? No, that's not a telephone. It's the latest in massaging technology. A deep muscle stimulator. Believe me, you haven't lived until you've tried it. Club Med is just a charge card away for these Schwarzenegger lookalikes. Add a bit of sun and a little oil, and the California surf scene will never be the same. Now the man who guides these warriors of the ice is skipper Tommy McVie. His private room comes complete with his own personal dressing area. And what does a well-dressed Utica player wear? Well, this year, he is sporting a predominantly white ensemble with just a hint of red and green trim to give him that European look. And no player would be caught dead without a sturdy chapeau to complete his outfit. And we can't forget the footwear. Finally crafted blades are whatever Utica player is sporting this season. A bit of padding strategically placed at the elbows and chins complete this beautifully color-coordinated suit that any player would be proud to own. It is to die for. So, there it is. From foot powder to bubbly hot tubs. A dressing room that you might easily have found inside a royal palace or a Beverly Hills mansion. wasn't sure what I was going to do, and Eddie Shore, who was my uncle, was established here in Springfield, and, or New Haven at that time, because the Army had taken over the Springfield uh, Coliseum, and he said to me, well, why don't you come down here and I'll teach you hockey, and I said, well, okay, and I uh, finally arrived in New Haven, and I remember driving up, I remember this very specifically, I drove up in front of the old New Haven arena, and the first thing I saw was Eddie Shore coming out the front door, and he said to me, I'm glad to see you, you're leaving tonight for Cleveland as the trainer. Jack was born August 11th, 1919 in Regina, Saskatchewan. He played a lot of hockey at the amateur level until he was called into action by the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1941. A broken back during his service put an end to the playing days of Jack Butterfield. And then in 1949, it was back to the AHL, a place called Springfield, and as history would dictate, that is where Jack would stay. Jack has served in virtually every capacity with Springfield, except as a player. He was general manager when Springfield took three straight Calder Cups, a feat that still stands in the record books today. And in August of 1966, Jack Butterfield assumed the position of president of the American Hockey League. Well, Jack is still the president, and judging by the job he's doing, he's going to be around for a few more years. He's been through the thick and thin of it all. One of the toughest assignments Jack has had to deal with was the development of the World Hockey Association, which brutalized many NHL teams and threatened the destruction of the American Hockey League.
And in order to try and uh, keep ourselves alive, I made the suggestion to the to the owners that would they go to the National Hockey League and, and see if they couldn't uh, develop some sort of a system where there would be a farm system where it would actually uh, be a development league so that the National Hockey League would put their players here and maybe subsidize their salaries and, and let us stay alive. And uh, many of the owners listened to me and went to the National Hockey League. And again, the, the foresight of the National Hockey League uh, owners and coaches and that uh, just helped us come through a very, very difficult time. And now... As president of the AHL, one of the most unpleasant duties for Jack is discipline. The same can be said for many people. It has to be done, but boy, it is not fun. This is just the one aspect of the job that I really dislike. I, every other aspect of this I, I love. I love being with the people. I, I like hear all my duties with the exception of discipline, and that's the one thing that does bother me. Guy come to me and he says, look, he says, I'll give you $500 if you'll let me skate in the warm-up. I just, suppose. Just, just, a just a fan, eh? But he looked like a hockey player, eh? And I, I figured, well, 500 bucks, we can have a pretty good party with this after, eh? So I figured the guy's pretty good. So I said, well, I don't know. So finally what we do is we get him in a uniform, we get, the five, get the 500 bucks first, eh? We get him in a uniform, figuring he can skate around, shoot, and do, you know, look pretty good. And put, we put a helmet on him and everything. Couldn't even stand up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Providence, you know how they have dinner up there. Jack Butterfield is choking on a steak. He can hardly believe it. He's looking at it. And the guy went around the boards, and I'm praying the guy don't fall, because the guy falls. Eh? We're all in trouble and gets hurt. But we got through it. Jack Butterfield was going to find us and everything. We got our 500 bucks, and what a party we had. <laughs> It takes a lot of hard work to keep all the stats and transactions and everything else that needs to be done to keep a league like this above water. And Jack has some of the finest staff working with him. And on expansion, Jack is counting on the NHL to lead the way. I think that what's eventually going to happen is that the, you know, the National Hockey League is probably going to end up with 24 teams and there are going to be 24 development teams somewhere. Now, whether we're going to be in the American League, the International League, or a combination of that, I don't know. But I think that's something that we have to give some serious thought to for the future. You know, we're going to get a final four for the Stanley Cup. We're going to have a team from Stockholm, one from Helsinki, one from Moscow, and one from Philadelphia. Uh, I hope not. I'd hate to think that because now we've got a few Russians coming over here, that the next step in this master plan that is hidden like the political football that you never see but you kick around, I wonder is the next step going to be a team to challenge from the Stanley Cup over in Russia, or are they going to come over and play a tour, or are they going to come over, uh, play a bunch of games, and then go back and play a bunch of games in Russia? Is this the way they're going to open it up and just sort of slide it into us? Well, what would be wrong with that? What would be wrong with playing a seven-game Stanley Cup final with the Moscow Red Army against the Philadelphia Flyers? I like I don't, that. I think it'd be great if Russia stays in Russia and play Russians, and if they want to send some of the players over here because they need the money to further their hockey, go ahead. But keep the Russians over there and let us have our Stanley Cup in North America. Why not let the Russians have a crack at the Stanley Cup? Let the Swedes have a crack at it. Let the because their system isn't the same as our system. Their system is geared to their system. They have one team representing a whole country, so what they do is they'll go and get all these players, they'll give us the dregs, and they'll keep their best team for that one team, groom it, and it's not really the same because we don't have a one team killer, representing come us. On, come on, killer, we killer. have a draft of 21 teams taking the best players. In Russia, they're going to have all the best players sitting there like a loaded bomb. Good hockey is good hockey. So some of the best games we've seen were between club teams. That's fine. You, Leave you, the you club remember, teams you, in you Russia. Remember, I don't remember think the we need Canadian them to game on New Year's Eve? Do we need, maybe the greatest yes, game ever great. played. It was great for once. I think it's done its tour. I think as long as they're the enemy, leave them over there. Hey, if we want to see the best in hockey, I say we open it up. The killer, he says no way. You can agree, you can disagree. Those are killer's comments. Back to Chris Chelio. He's got some room. He shoots. They score. Matt Nassler on an affliction. The red, white, and blue of Le Canadien is perhaps the most notorious color combination known to the hockey world. That CH stands for tradition, and it stands for winning. 
Year after year, Sherbrooke's parent club, the Montreal Canadiens, bring up a new breed of hot young rookies, the players to take them to another Stanley Cup win. And these players are developed on the farm in Sherbrooke, Quebec. This year, Sherbrooke is no different than any other team, with a slew of rookies, a few veterans, and head coach Jean Amel. I think there's a problem uh, inside of our own zone that I'm going to have to fix. Uh, I think we're going to have to play more men-to-men -men, uh, inside of our own zone because uh, maybe a lack of communication is the problem there. So I'll see tomorrow and uh, work inside of inside of our own zone to see what we could improve, the communication maybe in between defensemen and uh, centers and wingers. And it's just a matter of getting used to uh, different line mates and stuff. You know, I'm playing center and I'm playing right and playing left. I'm playing all over the place. So it's... Now with rookies like Ed Christofoli and Andrew Castles, who already has spent some time with the big club, the Baby Habs are again a threat for first place in the North. The ups and downs of a rookie can best be described by Castles, who just recently went back to the farm. It feels pretty good. Uh, it's good to be back, although it would have been nice to stay up. But uh, I was uh, happy with the game that we had tonight, and hopefully it'll just get better as we go on. And the rookie lineup doesn't stop there. Our team is, I think we have a young team, but it's a very, we, we've been playing very good hockey, and, uh, you know, it's my first year here, so I don't really know what to build on from there. Um, it's definitely a faster game here. Uh, uh, it's tougher. It's it's more controlled, though. Um, it seems as you go up the ranks, you get the players are more adept to uh, playing their positions, and you know you, you just you have your job to do, and that's it. Take a look between the pipes. Two first-year backstops are holding the Canadians in the race. Andre Rasico, who spent some time in Montreal only to be bombed by the opposition, and one Jean-Claude Bergeron, who's been carrying the load for Sherbrooke. At the beginning, I think it was the everything was faster. Uh, the shot was uh, harder. Uh, the guys are more mature, and uh, that that's a big difference in between junior and uh, the American League. Yeah, the shot is, sure is tough, but uh, I keep working in the practice. Uh, I've got the beat of the American League now, and uh, I hope it's gonna be okay. Yeah. And the Sherbrooke Canadians still have a couple of tough guys hanging around from last year's lineup. Their brother team of Serge and Mario Roberge are still enforcing the rules from a French-Canadian point of view. Here, Serge engages in one of the most vigorous efforts in our ringside file. Mario, on the other hand, has been concentrating on playing some hockey. His point total has improved immensely, but Mario has to go one way or the other. Yeah, that's right. I want to. I want to work on my uh, on my uh, offense, offense and uh, defense work too. But uh, that's very hard to play tough uh, with that. Uh, when you when you try to mix too uh, the, the too uh, too much, you uh, you lost your con concentration. Yeah, that's right. They're going to need big efforts from guys like Benoit Brunet, who along with Stefan LeBeau formed one half of last year's dynamic rookie duo. At the beginning of the year, uh, I was really confident in going to camp because I, I finished uh, third score in the league last year. And maybe I was overconfident, and that's why I, I got sent back to Sherbrooke. Veteran players like Mark Peterson seem to already know what it takes to get this team into and hold on to top spot in the division. You know, it seems like uh, the team's playing well one night and uh, the goalie's not, and the next night the goalie's playing well and the team's not. And, uh, you know, one of these days we're going to put everything together and get back on track and uh, put some wins together. Armadron, a around the American Hockey League. No question, the class of the Northern Division, as you saw earlier in the program, are the Sherbrooke Canadians. And here they are against Newmarket. The Canadians take a 4-0 lead into the second. And look out, Brunei sets up Martin Desjardins for a 5-0 lead. From the faceoff, Billy Root finally beats Jean-Claude Bergeron. Now Bergeron has the best goals against average in the AHL, 2.73 goals per game. And that's a big reason why the Canadians have been so dominant. And here's another reason. A sensational point-blank save. And another. Okay, you can't be perfect all the time. That's Gilles Thibodeau with the hammer. Who's back with the Toronto Maple Leafs, by the way, covering off injuries to Wendell Clark and Ed Olchuk. This time it's bombs away. That's Domi and Lyle Odelin with more than 250 minutes in penalties between them this year. 
Now the Saints aren't going to let Sherbrooke or Bergeron off easy. John McKenna beating him. Mark Peterson cans the empty netter, so Sherbrooke gets out of Newmarket with a 6-4 win. Okay, here we go. Moncton in Halifax. The Citadel's in second spot. The Hawks fighting for fourth. That's the Citadel's taking an early 2-0 lead. And who's this? Yeah, it's Morgana, the kissing bandit, taking a run at Halifax captain Dean Hopkins. And a big hello and welcome to North America for Czech-born Ladislav Tressel. Bet the coach back home didn't tell him about this. All right, back to the action, so to speak. Larry Bernard with a dribbler. Although I don't know if the fans are paying a whole lot of attention. But I'll tell you, Mario Brunetta sure is. Looks like the adrenaline is flowing. The Hawks and Citadel's trading goals. And it ends in a 3-3 sister kisser, although not for everyone. And the game's first star? Well, we'll let you be the judge of that one. Let's flip to Moncton now for a rematch. And remember, the Hawks are trying to grab onto a playoff spot. Now remember, the night before, it looked as though they were having themselves a pretty good time. Well, for this one, it was all out war. The game is over, the Hawks have won it five to two, but the action is just starting. Kaminsky and Gagne, get it rolling. And everyone is into it. Hey, where's Morgana when you need her? Shaughnessy won't let this one die. As we mentioned, a 5-2 Moncton win, but something Halifax will not forget. And Robbie Fatorek does a little cleaning up. Cape Breton and Moncton. And this is the team the Hawks are trying to catch for four spot. Danton Cole makes it 1-0. Brian McReynolds gooses that to 2-0. And Stu Kulak finishes it off, a 3-0 Moncton win over Cape Breton. Let's head for the Southern Division, Hershey at Rochester. That's Don Biggs with a beauty for a 2-1 Hershey lead. Rochester's Francois Gay, and it's a 2-2 tie. Ross Fitzpatrick makes a 3-2, and an empty netter gives the Bears a 4-2 win. You go out and play a team in your own building, you let them come in, and they basically do what they want to do. I don't think you played a very tough game. That's not a tough hockey team. We played a, a, just a cozy game. We had too many passengers out there. If you're not scoring goals, you better start hitting somebody. And if you're not going to hit somebody, well, then the gloves better come off once in a while. Because if you're not going to do one of those three things, you're not doing nothing for our hockey team. Rochester at Springfield a night later. Darren Shannon puts it home, one nothing American. Now it's the third period. Jim Jackson ties it at two. But with 23 seconds left, Tom Fitzgerald blows a smoker, and Springfield wins it 3-2. Now, as we've mentioned, there is more at stake in the AHL this year besides the Calder Cup. It's the Export A Inc. Maritime Challenge Cup. And right now, the three teams involved are playing it pretty tight. There's Moncton on top with 19 points, Halifax just two points back, and Cape Breton still in it with 14 points. But it's a different story in the Northern Division standing. Sherbrooke on top with a five-point cushion over Halifax. Halifax just a few points ahead of Maine. Then comes Cape Breton, one point back, and Moncton is still in the battle. In the Southern Division, what a tussle going on for top spot. Adirondack by a point over Utica and Baltimore, and there's Newmarket and Rochester still in that great battle for the fourth and final playoff spot. And that's it for another week. Thanks so much for stopping by. Jim, did you get a good workout in there? Ah, uh, gee, you're good. You're real good. But, uh, no, it's your turn. No, no, I don't, I don't have a mask. Trust me. Next week on Ringside, we know all about the big salaries and the strong union in the NHL. Join Ralphie on the road and see how the rank and file in the AHL make out. We'll pay a visit to Chocolate Town, USA and meet the Hershey Bears. And we'll profile John Smith, who's put family and loyalty before fame and fortune. When the Rickside crew travels on the road, 
They travel exclusively with Go Vacations Motorhomes. Go Vacations when you're on the road.